And now for the Monero development segment. Hey. You good. What's up, man? How's it going? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm excited today because I just woke up to an update about this miner. And we, the, I think we know the price of it. <laughs> oh, yeah? Hey, oh, like in first? Oh, allegedly, there's a Reddit post. I'm, I'm, I'm going to save it to the end to keep the listeners pinned. I already um, have a guess it. myself based on um, uh, a, um, a benchmark site I found that already had a suggested price. So oh okay because yeah. I, I saw that too but i was like i don't know but apparently a company is, is listing the pre-order for it but sorry for the people who don't know what we're, what this even is i just i just hop straight into it That's but yeah it. i'll go over the um pricing later that sounds good yeah yeah do your thing man yeah sorry i just hopped right i mean we, we started <laughs> but yeah um basically you might have seen this twitter post going around i think i saw it on tuesday and it talks about monero miner so i uh, sort of the question is um did monero get asics you know what's up with random x going on and the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> are not asics um well probably not no one knows what's in them but they're like 99 percent sure these aren't asics what these probably are is just a bunch of RISC V CPUs, like um, just jammed together into one machine. That's probably what these are. And I think you covered that in the in the interview with Howard Chu, which is a great interview. I know you recommended it earlier, but um, also you like black shirts, but uh, <laughs> my, my Monero related shirts all the time. <laughs> and then this is a really good interview with Howard Chu. Um, I think it released. On Tuesday, I was super excited. I know they usually release on Wednesday, right? The Monero Talks? Yeah, we tried to get it out as soon as possible. Yeah, no, that was so exciting. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll tune in Wednesday. It came out like Tuesday. I was like, oh, I'm going to listen to this one. It was a really good, really good interview. I recommend you watch it. It's a lot more, I mean, it's an hour and, and, and a half, roughly, with Howard True. I mean, like, best content ever made. But, um, yeah, good stuff. but so you you might be relieved these are not asics so random x is not broken don't believe any of the fud that you hear but these could still um be a problem could still create a problem for minor decentralization based upon the pricing that they release at which we know now but i will save the pricing for later and you might wonder even though they're not asics how are they still a threat to monero minor centralization and the answer is that they could make um give large miners more of an, an unfair advantage because um unfortunately life isn't fair but mining monero should be fair i i believe so i think a lot of people in this space believe so that's why monero tried to fight um well not tries but fights asics because basically um basically just like the way that mining works and the way that physics works the way that economics work large miners naturally have disadvantage they have things like economics of scale for example, if you if you go to buy computers, you're gonna get a better price if you buy ten versus if you buy one, right? So you you're already getting a very bigger discount on them. You also you might have access to cheap power, right? Because if you're a big big miner, you could probably negotiate a better contract with the local power supplier, or you even build your big mining your your big mining rig in a place that has cheap power, right? So you you're probably not gonna build it in Manhattan, New York. You're probably build it in the middle of nowhere, Texas. So you probably have cheap power. You also have more um, often payouts or more frequent payouts, which is an interesting, um, which helps you finance, right? Because if you're a small miner and you get paid once every two years, it might be a large amount, but you still, it's hard to finance that. Versus if you're a large miner, you probably get paid more frequently, even though it would be, you know, the same amount if you average it out over a long time period. They also have faster communication because, you know, speed of light, internet speed, because it's going to be a factor in that. And there's so many more things that physics and economics lead to having large miners have an advantage, right? But this advantage isn't good. You, you don't want to have, because these type of advantages lead to centralization in the network, and they can, and it has led to Bitcoin transaction censorship and all of these things, right? Because if you're a big miner, you're probably working with the government because, right, you can't, you're not going to hide a large mining operation in your in your closet, right? So you're going to end up, censoring transactions, restricting transactions, requiring requiring KYC for transactions, which is just not good, right? For privacy reasons. 
And sorry if I'm going a bit fast. Am I being clear? But um, I want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Good okay. stuff. So basically, Random X ensures that the um, large miners don't have a hardware advantage. And in addition to all the advantages they already have from just, you know, how mining works. And that's what it does in theory. But um, Bitmain's new machine could hurt this. Right? I saw the pricing. I was like, I don't know if this pricing is accurate, but like this machine is, is probably just a bunch of RISC five CPUs in a box, not an ASIC by any stretch of the imagination, right? But it could still hurt Monero's decentralization because depending on the price that it comes out at, it could um, give a better price to hash rate ratio, which gives large miners a hardware advantage, right? So let's say in theory it was a dollar, right? Like obviously this would not be good for Monero because Bitmain has has access to really, really cheap um, Bitcoin Monero miners. And that could drive out home miners and other decentralized people like that. But obviously, it's not going to be a dollar. So it all just depends on the price that it comes out at. And I, I ran some numbers to hopefully illustrate what I'm talking about, like the price to hash rate ratio. And so this is like, I'm not a miner. So don't take this data and go buy a miner tonight. But I, I had a thought experiment of if what if you spent $200 and you, you want to mine Monero, right? And you spent $200 versus if you want to mine. Bitcoin, you spent $200. Now, I did the math. I found this CPU that people recommend. I think it's a little older. And this CPU is literally, I think, like $20. And I forgot the hash rate on it. But if you do the math and you spent $200 and you bought a motherboard, power supply, you would probably come way under $200. But that would get you this percentage of the um, Monero, net Monero network, essentially. So if you spent $200, you would get this percentage here for Monero. And unfortunately, since Bitcoin only has ASICs, you would get this number on the right here, which is a um, two, which is a two powers difference. So essentially, if you do the math on it, 100, if you were to spend your money mining Monero, your money goes 100 times farther mining Monero, right? Because the hash rates are not as dominated by ASICs, essentially. Does that make any sense or that jump? Because I, I, I had a hard time last night trying to find the right like I, I didn't want to throw too many graphs on it, too many numbers on it, because I don't like people listening at home. But does, does that make sense, or should I elaborate more? Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Yeah, it's like if you have the money to buy an ASIC, then you're better off buying an ASIC. But like if you don't have that, if you don't have twenty grand to buy an ASIC, your your the little amount of money you have, you want to spend goes way farther for the Monero. Right? Yes, that's exactly it. And these numbers actually get much worse the bigger you go, right? Like the more expensive you spend, a thousand. I imagine these numbers are going to be much more in Monero's favor because the uh, ACs get much more powerful the bigger they are, more money you spend, more advantages you get, essentially. So your money goes much farther in supporting the Monero network than it does on Bitcoin. Oh, so you should say that continue going goes up. I, I think it's worse. Money. It gets worse okay. the more money you spend, right? Because ACs get much better the more, just like a computer, like the more money you spend, you get newer stuff with ACs, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I think... That was, that's what I thought last night. Like the more money you spend on it, the ratio this ratio gets worse in favor. It gets better in Monero's favor. But I could be wrong about that. So I did I didn't run the numbers on too many things, but that's my intuition right now. Does that does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Uh we can have others jump on later to to yeah. either test agree. Another yeah. I don't want to derail you for a second, but another point an interesting point mm -hmm. that or two interesting points that Howard brought up. And once again, I recommend people watch the whole thing. It was, it was yes. still lots of tidbits of info. Um, is that Howard suspects and others suspect that these things were around for quite some time for at least two mm -hmm. years. And, you know, that's what Bitmain normally does, right? They use them personally before, you know, and then once the hardware is essentially old and they lose that competitive <laughs> advantage, that's the, thing that them to the market. Uh, and there's, there's evidence that that they've existed for two years and howard mm -hmm. goes through and explains um basically the fingerprinting that you could see uh, mm -hmm. you know evidence that these that these things were were potentially there among us for the past two years another you know interesting point that howard that howard makes is this idea that over time bitcoin mining becomes less profitable i mean monero mining monero mining becomes less profitable right because we're mm -hmm. It's more computing power fighting for a fixed amount of Monero that's issued through the tail emission, right? There's only mm -hmm. so much Monero issued. Um, 
and it's more computing power fighting over that. And because of that, it's it's more computers fighting over the uh, same piece of pie. So yep. probability goes down. And, and because of that, if you think about it, that the tendency for large uh, mining uh, companies to arise in Monero doesn't really exist because of that, because of this profitability issue uh, with as you throw more computing power at it. Uh, you know, profitability is is ultimately going down per per miner over time, which may sound like a bad thing in your in your mind, but it's actually mm -hmm. Howard explains it as as being a good thing and kind of what the ideal is for a proof of work mining network. That that's... like he incentivizes these uh the uh, the mining companies right because right. they're mainly in the business of making large profits by mining. That's it. Right. As far exactly. As I mm -hmm. exactly. And of course, there's also the Monero price aspect. If you know suddenly boom double overnight for whatever weird reason, you know that would uh right. That but would it doesn't. It, but, but it doesn't deter people like me and you that you know are okay with basically mining at break even, right? Because yeah, we or I, Monero, I'm loss. So like, I'm, it, like, I'm okay. It's like the a bit of a loss. Right, and incentivizes those that truly believe in Monero, or that are or like hoping that the price goes up, and it kind of decentivizes those that are just in it for the business of trying to make a buck through mining. So it's just an important point to bring up. It's kind of subtle one, and I think mm -hmm. it's important to realize that. Yeah, like I said, I recommend that interview because it's feel. I mean, it's like an hour and a half of Howard True giving up, giving great insights and Doug asking great questions. So I think there's a lot of nuance to be had there, like you said. But definitely, you should watch the like. I, sorry, I keep saying, but like the interviews, really, like Howard Chu's interviews are probably some of my favorite ones on Monero Talk. You should definitely watch it because there's a lot more nuance in that talk that I'm able to fit into my little five minute yeah. presentation. But yeah, um, the next one is so basically, this miner isn't an ASIC, but it could have a better price to hash ratio, roughly, right? Because there are things like power that you got to take into account. And that could drive this ratio that we talked about earlier into more in a centralized way. But I, I don't think that it does because I, I went through and thought about like, Oh, can we tweet on this? It only needs one main board or computer. Oh, yeah. Someone said, can we tweak RandomX so that it only needs one main board or a full computer? I have no idea. I remember, I know that the, there was a, a chat with the devs about tweaking RandomX to make it like more memory hard or things like that or other things like that. I don't know if they, it seemed like they were just talking about it. So I'm not sure. And that, that was in the Matrix mining chat if you want to google that and find more talk about that they happened like a couple days ago but yeah so basically um howard true said in the interview also that this miner is going to be just be more convenient if anything right instead of having to throw a bunch of cpus and motherboards down you could have a more convenient box that you place there i doubt that it has better power ratios i doubt that they're getting better cpu deals from the manufacturer but these are some ways that they could get you know cheaper hash price per hash ratio and the price is out so um, I don't think that there's that this is really going to cause a big issue. But then I think this, that Howard Chu said, if if these are two year old ones, does that mean that they have new ones that they're using currently that are way better than these? Uh, well, his answer to that was not necessarily. Maybe they haven't okay. created new ones yet, but these are just now at the point where it's not worth it for them to just use them behind the scenes that they might as well start selling them. So they're just dumping uh, them on the market yeah. now. Yeah. For probably oh, an exorbitant okay. price for right. what they're actually like right. worth. Oh, so. that makes sense. I feel bad for people buying this and it's like they probably don't even clean it. You get like a, you get something that looks used, but you're paying like uh, an exorbitant amount of money for it. I'm going to price. The price I believe is like four thousand. I saw a pre order. Was that what you were getting, Tuxedo? Tuxedo? Oh, four thousand. Oh, uh, if it's That's actually four thousand, it's not profitable like whatsoever. Uh, I saw on hashrate.no. The suggested price was twenty five hundred dollars, but even at that price, it was barely, like barely profitable uh, on a day to day basis. But at and four this is grand, literally off of, off a of Reddit post I found seven hours ago hmm. on Monero R slash Monero mining. It says around four K. So I don't. This is it. This is they. They have a link for Viper ViperaTech.com. You can place a pre order. I think. So you know. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure you ran your numbers, but from what I can see at four grand, it's basically not profitable whatsoever. Yeah, no, that's what people saying on Reddit also. That's not, yeah. Like the ROI well, is going to be so like long. It's by the time, oh, you hit that 1,000 day to where you're supposed to have made up your money, you know, 
it's not going to be as good. There's going to be so many changes and everything. It's yeah, you're never going to hit that. Yeah. So this not a threat to, in my opinion, not a threat, probably not a big deal. And I think the data shows that also, but if you want to help, you, you can also, if you want to help like fight centralization in general, which is good, you should probably, you know, you can always, <laughs> Alaska wow. Adnaz, man, it's funny guys in the chat, but, <laughs> <laughs> But um, you should you can mine Monero Lyra on anything that runs Linux, probably more obviously, right? More things that run run Linux because um, but you can mine it on your phone, Raspberry Pi, and and if you like I said, people are really into mine Monero at a loss, you know, just because we support the network and you need de you need decentralization, you don't want to turn into big miners, you know, centralizing and requiring KYC. Like are like Bitcoins like fifty percent of the mining pools are, require KYC, which is like yeah. not. Crazy. It's ridiculous. Like that's just it's crazy. Like I don't think they can even do that to Monero, even if they like because like Yeah, try uh, try. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> like no, we're one, not no one. Yeah, try. <laughs> yeah, no. Which is so funny because I think my Monero's biggest feature is his culture because people are just not putting up with this. Like Bitcoin is put up with like anything, dude. It's kind kind of ridiculous. I feel like Monero people are not gonna KYC to mine to mine Monero. This makes no sense. Well, it's, like, it's just not going to arrive at that because once again, you're yeah. just, you're not going to have these super large mining companies that are mining Monero that are then yeah or these you know that are then going to implement these rules, um yeah or implement these regulations. Another thing you you mentioned possible tweaks to RandomX. Howard did talk mm -hmm. about two potential upcoming tweaks. I forget exactly what they what they are, uh, but one of them would happen to make this bit. Bitmain miner even less efficient than it already is. Not for that Good purpose. Uh, it was for other purposes, but the, mm -hmm. the effect is it will reduce its efficiency by something like 10%. So Oof. that's coming down the pipe for them as yeah, well. Yeah, and it's already like... Um, I don't know if you saw the... Uh, if you looked at that hash rate site, Digun, mm -hmm. um, but it was... It suggested um, at... Like, granted, you have like... You know, you live in a spot in the world where you have like the cheapest electricity, right? So like 10 cents a kilowatt hour, which... Mm -hmm. That's not like as common anymore, especially in Europe. It's really expensive. At ten cents a kilowatt hour with this machine, you would be making like two dollars profit a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're paying you're paying four grand to make two dollars profit a day on Monero Random X. Yeah, I don't think these are gonna be a threat. I, I'm gonna let people chime in who are more experts, but from like you know, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, this is. And then to be fair, uh, Bitmain never said it was an ASIC. They never said it. You know, yeah. they never advertises that. It's just it's kind of funny, yeah. All, yeah. all that being said, Bitmain, if you're listening, we're 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 willing to take a sponsorship from you. They they actually reached out, <laughs> they reached out to us for Monerotopia in Mexico. Oh, really? Wow. And they wanted to be a sponsor. Interesting. And we had two calls with them. And we're like, okay, you guys want to sponsor? Like, you, you realize we're we're ASIC resistant, so they're like, oh, well, we're we're developing uh, Monero ASIC. We're like, really? I'm like, okay. I'm like, that that is huge news. I'm like, if you want to sponsor us, by all means, and you know, come to the conference and present on your Monero ASIC. I'm like, people would love to hear this. And <laughs> the people I were talking to, I guess they were just part of the marketing side of things, and not really the technical side, because. They had no understanding of random acts and the Jesus. like concepts of ASIC resistance. They were just like, no, we're we know that people love Monero, so we want to just issue the, create this Monero ASIC. But yeah, uh, no. I'm, awesome. I'm actually I just I just uh, DM them right now because I'm trying to maybe <laughs> get them to do a show or something. I mean, no, no, it's just it's just it has to be frustrating to do to do all of this stuff and, and get like these kind of results out of it. But you know, they you know. They know what they're doing. They're engineers. But today, so we're going to have the Monero mining quiz. Sorry, I may have had a misspelling. But the first question is, who hosts the Monero P2P pool bonus raffle? Who hosts that? And the bonus raffle is basically a way to incentivize P2P pool usage. So people, I think, hmm. I think donations are pretty much fund this pool. And then basically it, it helps you, more incentivizes you to do P2P pool versus centralized mining. Do you all know who runs this raffle? I didn't even know there was a thing going on. There's a, an extra Either. raffle bonus that you get. I think that's cool. support XMR. Is that is that the final answer? Anyone Somebody else? Is saying yeah, I honestly don't know. XMR. Ah, yeah, the people at home got it. It's, uh, yeah. This one was XMR 
I didn't know how to space out their name. So XMR versus Bees, VS Bees. I didn't know how to say it. But yeah, I think it's been running for around a year at least. I think I saw a Reddit post someone announcing hey, it. Zo- Zopi Park got it. So Zopi Park, if you uh, post a Monero address and we'll 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 send you a little send you a little tip there. Oh wow. I'd- a little okay. prize. <laughs> or giving away prizes yeah. winning the quiz now, huh? Yeah, why not? We'll, th- we'll oh, throw yeah. it. Oh, there you go. There you I mean, go. Don't, ex- don't expect much, but, you know. <laughs> well, uh, I, I threw a bonus round in, Doug. Hope that's okay. Hopefully that doesn't... <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, does like... Oh, well, he's going to do another giveaway now. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Bonus round. But yeah, so you should you should do PDP pool, of course. It's, it's really cool software. You only need, I think, the bare minimum, like, six megabytes of ram to use it at the very lowest setting it's actually beautiful software so you should mine pdp pool all day don't use centralized miners but next question is which pool is the biggest monero ocean xmr vsb nano pool or support xmr first one to guess in the comments let's say first one to guess in the comments that gets it correct anybody anyone and you might have heard about in the news i think they recently had like over 51%, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been them. So yeah, I think we're really not good for the week, network. Yeah, yeah, I actually did. So who who currently has the biggest pool? I took a screenshot last night. So oh, as yeah. Last night. Got the oh. first one. Yes. Hopefully they, they aren't Googling these. That would be, be a little cheap. Hey, gang, no. Got it. Nano pool. Uh, <laughs> Nano yep, pool. Post, post your That's Monero right. address. So as of Nano last pool. night, they, Nano pool has 26%. Support XMR has 20%. So Alaska A9 was close. Now, I think unfortunately P2P pools around I want to say like eight, nine percent. So, you know, need to get more decentralized mining up, but this is just a quick overview into Monero. The fluctuations mining. are pretty insane. That yeah, it's on Nanopool. It's crazy. Yeah, it flips really fast. Because they were they were the ones that had the fifty one percent, right? Last yeah, they did. And week? then like within a day it went from like thirty six percent to fifty one percent. It's like cra- that must have been uh Bitmain just flipping all their their uh Monero miners on at the same time, just that once, just turning them all on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and then they they literally just take turn take them from the wall, throw it in a box, and add some like tissue, and then ship it straight to you. So that's what you'll be buying with the new miner. But to wrap up, um, these could be a problem. No, but they could be a problem. You should watch the interview. Really good interview. Like I said, Howard True is 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 like chef kiss. I uh, mm-hmm. amazing interview. You should definitely watch it. Doug asked really good questions. And once again, you can mine Monero on anything. It's how you can help TLDR. You know, you, you're not going to make money, but you're going to help the, support the Monero network, which is supporting liberty and freedom. You're not going to get 212 kilohashes a second on your Android phone. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> because I don't know what you even get on your Android phone. I haven't tried on the phone. I tried on these little computers I have. I think I got like maybe like 100, like not that much, but yeah. So you, you, you won't make money, but you'll support the network. That's pretty much it. And I think that's it for me. Hopefully the guests come up next. I don't want to take too much time. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was great. And I'm sure we'll continue to chat about it uh, when mm-hmm. we have viewers on stage. I see Zappapack did post his address. What is the easiest way for me to get this guy? Because now it's a pain in the ass. How do I like copy this? Maybe I should have... Um... Uh, go to... Just go to... um, Open the YouTube link and copy it from the comment directly. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. We'll, do that. Oh, we'll okay. do that. All right, so... We'll probably do that after the show. Sunita, are you listening? I'll, I'll have Sunita do it. All right. Yeah, moving on. Moving on. Thank you so much, Digu. Yep, Please thanks, stick around Digu. if you can mm-hmm. for the viewers on stage so we could all chat about the news together. Yeah. Have a good day. You too, man.